November 19th is International Men's Day. It's a dedicated worldwide celebration aimed at shining a light on the positive contributions men bring to their families and communities alike. It's based on key objectives which include the promotion of positive male role models, improvement of men's health and well-being, and better gender relations. Previous themes have included working closer together for boys and men, celebrating diversity, alongside the exploration and expansion of reproductive options. In 2023, International Men's Day encourages organizations, institutions, and individuals alike to identify the causes of male suicide and try to find solutions that create a protective environment for men of all nations. With that in mind, this year's International Men's Day will be observed under the theme of zero male suicide. According to the World Health Organization, an estimated 703,000 people die by suicide every year. That's equivalent to more than one person every minute of every day. Men are at least twice as likely to die by suicide than women, a figure that is mirrored almost universally and consistently around the world. In the UK, there have been at least 5,000 deaths by suicide every year for the last decade. And on average, at least 70% of that number have been men. The reasons for this trend are in equal measure complex as they are multi-layered. They include psychosocial challenges such as stigmatizing attitudes that prevent men from accessing the help they need, as well as the fact that men are more likely to misuse substances or drink excessively, which can lower inhibitions and exacerbate suicidal thoughts. You've also got the propensity of men to use more violent methods, which increases the likelihood of death as an outcome of a suicide attempt. Lastly, biochemical differences between men and women mean that men are naturally less inclined to reach out for help when stressed, which can increase real or perceived feelings of loneliness, isolation, and the severity of depressive symptoms, which in and of itself is a risk factor for death by suicide. So how can we turn the tide and start to reverse some of these trends? Well, a wise person once said that you can't eat an elephant all at once. Or, or at all, actually. The point here is that it's the small, incremental adjustments that would affect meaningful change in the big picture. And as men, we would do well to get our own house in order before trying to fix the world. And so if home improvement is the order of the day, what tools might we need to get the job done? Well, here's three to consider. Using your conversational skills, empathy, and genuine intention to improve the situation of another is essential to connecting people with the help that they need before mental health becomes a problem through effective signposting. In the workplace, this means being aware of your organization's pathways to professional help and how to access them in a timely fashion. This includes a basic knowledge of safeguarding policies, awareness of mental health first aiders and wellbeing champions, alongside the contact details of your employee assistance program and occupational health team. Outside of the workplace, the Hub of Hope is the UK's leading database of mental health service providers and grants the user access to a directory of mental health services based on relevance and location. In addition, organisations such as Andy's Man Club and Tough Enough to Care are dedicated to providing safe, non-judgmental spaces for men to talk about the issues that affect them most. Our individual filter on reality, also known as the frame of reference, is the reason why we can all look out of the same window and see something completely different. Encouragement of social inclusion based on the individual's unique blend of upbringing, education, protected characteristics and lived experience will be a good step towards having more supportive conversations and away from a mindset which in some cases makes it the norm to trivialize what makes us different. Having the tools to recognize an unhealthy normal in yourself is another way you can boost resilience and prevent mental health from becoming a problem. For example, the mood elevator is a great way to focus the mind on gratitude and collaboration as opposed to judgment or blame and avoid some of the destructive behaviors we are more prone to when in a bad mood. The yerkes dodson curve helps us to visualize our relationship between stress and performance. And the glycemic index can help you bring more awareness to what you eat throughout the working day, which can help you avoid the negative impacts of anxiety and hypervigilance. If you want to learn more about some of the tools I've just mentioned and how you can use them to build your resilience in the workplace and beyond, click or tap the screen just here and I'll see you on the next video.